Hello, this is Roy with the Love Chat, and today's topic is They Slept with Someone Else. Now, this is video number 263. If you have a question you would like for me to consider featuring on the channel, please write it in a comment below, and if you enjoy my videos, I would be so very grateful if you'd subscribe and hit like. If you would like coaching on your situation, please visit my website, thelovechat.net slash coaching, and use the code TLC2020 for 15% off all regular voice coaching. Now then, it is a very, very normal thing to be concerned, upset, or even hurt when you're finding out that your ex might have been sleeping with somebody else. Many times we involve ego in the conversation, and what we'll do is, the second we find out our ex has been sleeping with somebody else, we kind of write them off. That's it. It's over. I never want them back. Or, perhaps we go the other route, which is, I am extremely hurt by this. This might mean that we're never going to get back together again. And basically what we do is dwell on all the pain that we feel now that they have shared themselves with someone else. And for me, the conversation kind of splits genders a bit because for men, they take a very ego-based view of this, sort of my property has been tarnished. And I'm not saying all men do this. Uh, obviously, when I make claims regarding gender, I'm not saying that every person of that gender does this, but it's just what I've observed in my personal coaching. And women tend to take a bit more of a very hurt, very quiet, very, I can't believe he's done that, or she's done that, or whatever the case may be. And I think it's important that we take a good look at what's going on here, why we act certain ways, and what to do if your ex sleeps with someone else, particularly when you're still emotionally connected to your ex. So this is something that's actually happened to me personally, and I'm sure many of the people in the audience listening can say the same. When your ex sleeps with somebody else, a bunch of different thoughts come through your mind. Was it better? Did they enjoy it more? Are they dating this person, even if it's just a one-night stand or something like that? How could they do this? Do they still love me? Are they thinking of me? And all of these different types of things that go through our mind. I think for us, what is overwhelmingly important is that we take a realistic look at this. They're single. They are trying to express their new singleness. And, and the reality is that this is one of the things people do when they're single. They tend to hook up with other people if they are trying to prove something to themselves specifically after a breakup, because that's the context we're addressing. So I'm not talking about your ex has been single for nine months and they sleep with someone else. They're not doing it to hurt you, obviously. We're saying that you guys are maybe a month out of a breakup and you've just heard through the grapevine that they are sleeping with somebody else or they are on Tinder or something like that. That hurts to know. It is a very personal and deep wound that opens up when we find out that they've been sleeping with somebody else, even if it means nothing. I try and take a very logical view of this, even though I've been in it and I know that it hurts. And the view is this. Our ex is a person with thoughts, feelings, emotions, desires, cravings, just like anybody else. Just like us. And we do not own our exes. We do not possess any sort of ownership or, or control or demand over them. We just care about them, but sometimes if we're all being honest with each other, we do tend to objectify them as though them having free will directly opposes our happiness. And so if they exercise that free will, we begin to think to ourselves, how could you do this? This was designed specifically to hurt me. And much less of this was designed for them to go out and explore the things that they have not had for a period of months to years, right? In my case, I was with my partner for 10 years. So being intimate, going on dates, things like that, with one person for 10 years, obviously, can get boring. It can get old. I get it. Particularly because I dated so young in my life, rather than a bit older. But I think what many people forget is that one of the things that makes something desirable is having the opposite experience to weigh it against. And so many people become worried when their ex begins to exercise that exploration, I guess is the way to put it, the good versus bad, the me versus them, the comparison that shows us, hey, here is the thing that you're weighing this against. And many of us are coming at this from a point of fear. That's ultimately what it is. Fear, ego, ownership, hurt, guilt, comparison, which I guess relates directly back to ego. But if you think about it, what if it's the opposite? Right? What if your ex goes and does this with somebody else and they hate it? We never think of it that way. We always think of it from the one way of, you know, that's it. I'm done. I'm over. And men 
in the audience, please be honest with me if you've ever thought this before. This twinge of guilt in the back of your mind that you're very angry with your ex because they went and slept with somebody else and now they are somehow dirtied by this. And if you haven't had that, that's totally fine. But I've heard this resentment repeated so many times, and that's really what it comes down to, is I know I don't own her, but uh, it makes me so angry to know she's been with somebody else. Somehow, now I don't want her. And my problem with that is that men are telling me this in good faith, and they are openly acknowledging this is not a thought or a feeling I'm proud of, it's just one that I have trouble controlling. Because they're very aware. I don't own her. I don't own him. They are not my property. But it feels like that, and I don't know how to address it. And I think the best way to address it is just to be open and honest about it and keep an eye on it. Because if you acknowledge that this is a thought that you need to work on, then the healing can really begin. And for women, they tend to take a much more liberal view of this, by and large, but not always. I have rarely heard a female client tell me, if he sleeps with anybody else, it's done. I don't know how I can take him back. Although, like I said earlier in the video, I'm not looking to generalize. I'm sure there are women who feel that way. But this is typically a more male-centered problem because of ego and because of manliness and, you know, why aren't I enough? Why is she getting that from another guy? I could have given that to her. Another thought enters our mind often, which is, you know, they're sleeping with this new person. Was this new person already around? Were they cheating on me with this new person? Is there something they have to tell me? It's suspicion. It's guilt. It's fear. And I think we really need to understand that we sense that they are sharing an intimate part of themselves with someone else that was for months to years reserved for only us. And so that causes a, an amount of fear in us because we fear that things are over because something that was reserved for only us for months to years is now being given to someone else and that severs the connection or the tie that they had with us. And that can be really depressing and hurtful. But I think it's up to us to understand that just because they've shared this part of themselves with someone else does not mean they don't care about us. It's simply an exploration of themselves. And I'm sure, to a degree, when you're in the relationship, perhaps from time to time, you wanted to explore that yourself. Is it really so hard to understand that we might want to hook up with other people from time to time outside of a relationship? I think as humans, we can all agree that this is pretty understandable. This is a pretty universal feeling. And it's up to us to not make a mountain out of what is essentially a molehill. And don't get me wrong, that's not to belittle anybody's pain or how they feel, it's just to say that this, in terms of human beings and our feelings and behaviors, is one of the more understandable ones. And so, the next topic of discussion is, fine, how do I get past how I feel? How do I accept the possibility that my ex might go sleep with somebody else, and they might also want to come back to me? Or, they go sleep with somebody else and maybe they never want to come back to me again. It's about understanding and accepting how you feel and knowing that we don't always have complete power over every automatic thought that we have. It's about learning to get better and learning to accept ourselves, which so many of us struggle with because either we don't want to or we feel that we can't trust ourselves or maybe that we are going to accidentally or unknowingly lead ourselves down a path that's not good for us. The reality of the situation is that you're allowed to feel bad if your ex sleeps with somebody else. You're allowed to feel pain you're allowed to feel anger. These are normal human emotions. Think about each of their functions. Anger, for example, helps let you know when something happened that you are not good with. Anger is evoked to let us know that we feel betrayed or hurt in some way, and that we want to use the burst of energy or the impulse to address that thing that's hurt us. We have to understand and accept that these are emotions, and emotions are geared towards our survival. And so, when we feel angry towards something or sad towards something, or disgusted by something, whatever it might be, these emotions inform us of how to proceed next. They are our base instincts. And we develop these emotions over time, but understand that sometimes emotional responses are some of the worst things that you can do. This is about understanding yourself, this is about accepting yourself, and this is about understanding that your ex is a human, with human desires, human urges, a need for exploration, and above all things... Something to weigh the relationship they had against the life that they are now trying. Many of the people I speak with are going through the grass is greener syndrome. Either you are dumped by someone who's going through it, or you yourself are going through it. Part of the biggest understanding that comes with the grass is greener syndrome is they are going and seeing if what they want to have is as good as what they had. Right? Is the grass greener on the other side? And what we've covered time and time again is no. 
The grass is greener where you water it. This, my friends, is no different. That's all I had for today. If you found my video helpful, I'd be very grateful if you'd subscribe and hit like. Please leave the comment below and tell me what you thought of this video and what videos you might like to see in the future. Additionally, if you'd like extra videos every week, private live streams with me, and free giveaways of my best-selling book on Amazon, just visit my Patreon. Patreon.com slash TheLoveChat. Until next time.